A lot of people have given up on the segways for one reason or another. I haven't, but in this case the battery has. So this is Mr Magnifico and in this video I'm going to rebuild it with more reliable cells that are almost double the capacity. As with any rebuild, the first step is taking it apart. I have never seen a battery shape like this before, so it was interesting to see how it was put together. The label shows it's a 10S2P 36V battery, which means it will be made up of 20 cells. Once I stripped the pack down, it was clear to see how it had been built. Unlike most battery packs, the battery management system or the BMS is sandwiched between the cells, 4 on the top and 16 underneath. The top 4 cells are in a 2S2P setup, which means the 16 cells below will also be in a 2S2P configuration. Before I could move forward, I needed to carefully separate all the cells from the BMS. This part is important, especially where the tabs are welded onto the PCB of the BMS. The tabs and the nickel can be replaced if they break, but if the PCB itself gets damaged, it's pretty much useless. From experience, I know that if you're not careful, the tabs can tear away from the PCB, which is game over. The PCB didn't have any polarity markings, so I added them myself with a permanent marker. Once the PCB was completely free, I cleaned up the tabs to make sure I didn't damage the PCB since I plan on reusing the board. To get a clean well later, I ground down some of the tabs so that they were flat with no old nickel or welding spots left behind. For the rebuild, I'm going to be using 20 of the Samsung 30Q18650 cells. Each cell has a capacity of 3000 mAh, which means the battery pack will be 36 volts, 6000 mAh. Quite an improvement over the stock 4400 mAh. With the cells ready, I laid out how they'd be arranged, two in parallel and two in series. These are the top cells, which sits above the PCB, so I started by replicating them first. I spot welded the bottom connections first, joining them in the 2S2P configuration. Once that was done, I welded the parallel connections. 
The key here was to make sure that the positive and negative ends never touched. Otherwise, I'd have an 8.4 volt short, which would not be very pleasant. With the top cells sorted, I moved on to the 16 cells underneath. Again, they are also in the same configuration, but laid out slightly different. To hold the shape, I glued them together before spot welding them. The reason for this layout is quite simple. When you flip them over, the nickel naturally falls in half, lining up with the PCB shape. Next, I cut the nickel strips down to size, making sure to leave extra at the end so they could be folded over and welded onto the PCB. With the nickel ready, I started spot welding. First the top strips and then the bottom. Once welded, I added masking tape to prevent shorts and glued the cells together into a cube of 16 cells.
Before doing any big welding, I checked for shorts using a wire that would spark if there was a problem. Luckily, there weren't any, so I carried on. After measuring all the nickel strips, I welded them in straight lines. At each end of the row, I left a small piece of nickel that would attach to the BMS later. Once everything was welded, I added Kapton tape for insulation and heat protection. This was also important because the nickel needed to be folded in half. The holes in the BMS lined up nicely with the tabs from the cells, so I glued the BMS in place with hot glue. After that, I folded the tabs over and spot welded them in place. With the bottom cells secured, it was time to move on to the top cells. I had to figure out the right orientation for this, because getting it right gives me 36 volts and getting it wrong will give me a nasty short. After double checking, I welded the tabs to the top cells, folded them in place and welded them onto the BMS. One tab didn't quite line up, so I removed that, re-welded it and trimmed it down to the right size. And with that, the rebuild was complete. I checked all the voltages and everything looked good.
Then I added protective paper to the ends of the cells and the BMS and secured the pack with duct tape. Before heat shrinking the whole thing, I decided to test it. No point in sealing it up only to find out it doesn't work. Luckily it powered up just fine whilst I waited for the heat shrink to arrive. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe.